Hi, Mark Wright here, and I want to introduce a new video from my friend Chris Vineski. In it, he uses four different shears. He's got a 7-inch spin cutting shear. He has a slip slide cutting shear that's just phenomenal. A slip 23-tooth seamless blending shear that'll blow your mind. And a spin 14-tooth point cut texture shear that is unlike anything else in the industry. Enjoy. Hey, I'm Chris Vineski, and today I'm going to go over some innovative, cool new shears and tools for hairstylists made by Via San Francisco. So many times I ask hairdressers all over the country, how many shears do you have? I get two, three, maybe four, and we try to make those two or three shears do a hundred different things. Well, can you make them do a hundred things? Yes, you can, but how much structure and how well is that haircut going to grow out doing all this internal distribution? So today I'm going to pick out four new innovative tools and it's going to be able to go inside and on the perimeter of your haircuts and make your haircuts grow out better than anything that you've ever seen in your life. So y'all ready? Let's have some fun. I'm going to bring up my first model, Sage. Come on. The first thing we're going to do on Sage's haircut, we're going to go through a perimeter cut seamless layering technique we're going to follow the head shape all the way down to give it a nice little movement basic haircut and we're going to start by doing that with a seven inch spin shear it's a swivel thumb it has a convex edge which is going to give you a cleaner cut it also has a leaf spring system which gives your blades more balance while you're cutting and make them last longer and the polymer glide on the inside that means metal on top of metal is not happening which wears down these are polymer glides so the shear is going to last a lot longer so we're just going to start we're going to use our hair natural fall with the side part I'm going to pull it up 90 degrees I'm going to angle down to the head and then notice where my swivel is my elbows are down and I'm just going to start by doing a seamless layering cut at a diagonal so when it falls and goes over the round of the head it separates therefore not showing those first set of layers that you're putting in your haircut and we're going to do a traveling guide so I'm just going to roll right through it and do this all the way around once again so just think if I was cutting it straight across normally I would have to go like this look at my wrist but now with a swivel thumb, I just bring my elbows down, a lot better position, which is going to give me a lot more control and definitely going to help out your neck and your back. So let's roll through the top part of the haircut. Work my way around. Okay, so this starts my haircut, and as you saw in the before picture of Sage, she was real heavy down at the bottom, flat on the top. What we're trying to create is volume up around the round and the crown of the head, and less weight around the bottom. So these techniques would be awesome to use on majority of your clientele. So once I establish my first seamless layer, I'm just going to follow it down. There's my guide, and I'm just going to follow it down the head shape. Cutting off every point in every direction, which gets rid of all the weight areas. All right, so the last thing I'm going to do is cut the length. 
And a lot of my cutting systems, what I like to do is cut the length last. So if you're not cutting more than two or three inches off the length, cut the length last. Because so many times as hairdressers, we go through the motions. We cut the length, we do the layers, cut a little fringe, and blow dry. We've got to cut the length again. So save the length for last and get a nice solid diagonal line, however you want to cut it, to your desired length. So down at the end, I'm just going to, it's not rocket science, I'm going to spend 45 minutes showing you how to cut the length, desired length, chop it off. That's all you have to do. Right, just a little bit of a side fringe. Blend it in with the shortest layers around the front. Here's another great technique that I use to swivel shear. Normally we'd have to go like this, but now I can just go in, wrist straight, and cut down. A lot better position than going like this. All right. So there's your basic haircut. Now we would go in here and blend in some of the layers. We have a really cool uh, 23 tooth texturizing shear and these also have convex teeth on there. They have a blunt edge which is very cool because the bottom blade is usually meant to grab the hair. The top blade is meant to cut it just like your straight shear. Well what Via did they did this revolutionary design where this is almost like a little blunt edge. So what happens when you cut the hair, it pushes the hair a little bit and cuts it all at the same time with the razor sharp convex teeth, which gives you no line. You can take this 23-2 slip shear and actually do anything that you possibly want to do with it. I could take a platinum blonde hair, close my eyes, and cut everywhere I want to cut on the head. It would not leave one line in the hair. If you don't believe me, try it. I challenge you on it. It actually is a great texturizer and thinner if you want to do that. So I would just soften some of her layers just a little bit like a blending. I'm just going to blend in these layers just a tad on wet hair. And then I will reuse it again on dry hair. So I'm just going to follow my design line and take a little bit of weight out and do a little bit of blending on my layers. Just softening those seamless layers that I put in. What's also a nice technique to do is if you're dealing with a side fringe, I can always come and shear over comb and soften it just a tad. Now, say, now Sage does have a lot of hair. If I want to go in and use another shear, if I want to do something, take a little bit of weight out, if I want to do more so on dry hair because you see everything on dry hair. Wet hair is a little cloudy, so you just want to make sure that you're using the shear for the right technique. Her hair is a little heavy. I want to soften it a little bit, so I would actually take my 14-tooth channeling shear, which is also a blunt bottom, convex teeth edge, which is razor sharp, which gives you that nice push and cut. So this really softens any kind of line that you would put in a client's hair. I'm going to do it from up underneath because this is where she's heavy. So I'm going to take vertical sections, come up, add a diagonal, and work my way around. And what this is going to do, so think about it. When it falls, this separates short pushes long, but also can suck it in when it comes around the round of the head. So we're really making the hair collapse.
This is a technique that some stylists use, but not many. So now I would totally be done with this haircut. What I want to do is go one step forward because what is your point of difference between your haircut and everybody else's? There's two things. One, everybody wants to have body and movement. Well, this haircut would be great, but in three weeks, it would start growing out, getting some heavy areas, laying a little flatter. So what I would like to tell my clients is to go ahead, let me go inside the haircut and take those heavy areas that you're going to have in three weeks out now. So when you come back to get a haircut, it's because you want to get a haircut, not because you need one. So I'm going to blow dry and flat iron sage. I'm going to show you some really cool techniques with some other shears. Okay, so I went ahead and blow dried and flat iron sage's hair real quick. I'm just going to kind of show you what it turned out like. So could that leave the hair salon? Absolutely, it could, but it's not finished. We have to get inside the haircut, make it collapse more, make it have more movement, let it have a little bit more body, a little bit more fun, what I call make the hair dance. You got to get inside the haircut and go that over exceed their expectations every time they come in. And this is what's going to make this haircut grow out a hundred times nicer than any other haircut I would have done without doing the internal distribution, weight distribution. So we use the precision seven inch shear swivel to put us in a good position. Uh, we also use the slip 23 tooth thinner to blend in, soften some of the layers, seamless layers. And then we use the 14 tooth channeling shear also with a swivel to go in there and do a little bit of weight distribution on wet hair. So I'm going to go back in and do the 14 tooth channeling shear also again, which is going to give it a little bit more movement because right now it's just a okay haircut. So now watch how the transition goes with using these innovative tools by Via to make my job a lot easier, but it's also giving it structure so it grows out better. Okay, so let's give you an example. So I'm going to take a vertical section. Okay, so now I'm taking out, distributing the weight out of the top layers. So you can already see what this section is doing different than this section. And that's what your client sees in the mirror when you're telling them, I'm using this innovative 14 tooth channeling shear for weight distribution so I can get your hair to collapse. But not only collapse, it's going to have more movement in it and it's going to grow out 100 times nicer than what you're used to. This is over exceeding your client's expectations by using tools to do the work for you instead of you trying to make certain tools do something they were not designed to do. So I'm just going to work my way around the haircut. And remember, I know it's a 14 tooth channeling shear, but it has that soft, blunt edge. So if you look here versus here, you see the difference. Not only that, if I turn her back around and I just start shaking it, look at the hair moving compared to this. That was the okay haircut. It's not moving. They're all stuck together. We're separating the weight. But we don't want to leave any lines in the hair either. So now when I push the hair back, you see how the layers just flow inside one another. You can almost start seeing inside the haircut. And when I push it back, it's more prone to staying back than it is pushing forward. So that is one neat little uh, technique you can do with the 14 tooth channeling shear. You can also see from the very front that it actually collapsed the haircut just a little bit. It's a little thick still here, so I'm just going to grab that. And we're just going to make it collapse. Now let's take the 23 tooth texturizer, and I'm going to soften some of the seamless layers. It's right in here. No line. Did you see that? No line whatsoever in the hair. 23 tooth slip thinners. You can't, I mean, I could just keep cutting, cutting. You cannot leave a line. But it is softening those because you know you'll start seeing the shorter layers first 
And the reason being, once they start falling over the round of the head, the layers start stacking on top of one another. So that's where you get that heavy area right on the first section of layering that you did. Now it's becoming a nice haircut. Let's soften her fringe just a tad. Right here. See how nice that lays? And we'll soften this front bottom just a tad. Okay, now one other thing that I really like doing is we have a dry cut shear. And it's called the slip dry cut. Slide. Now this is a totally different shear. It's only meant for dry hair. It does have two sharp edges. You cannot cut a straight line with this shear. It's only meant for slicing or point cutting, soft point cutting. So if I wanted to come in and slice just a tad, normal slice, what I like doing is having a little bit more control to it. So I close it as I'm pushing. So then I can kind of carve out whatever I need to do. But the biggest thing and my favorite thing to do with this shears, go on the inside of the round of the haircut. And give it a little bit of movement. I can push it forward or I can push it back. I wanted to go forward just a little bit, so let's turn just a little bit more. Just keep taking sections, closing it and pushing it all at the same time. I could do it sideways. I'm doing it horizontally because I want it to swing back and forth. If you did it vertical, you can kind of have a little bit more control of the direction you want that hair to fall. But I do that up underneath just to give it a little bit more movement. Take a little bit more weight out of right here, out of the bottom, with the 14 tooth channeling shears. So you could also pretty much call these a point cut shear because if you were trying to point cut, you're trying to put separate the hair, put a little texture into it. This is just doing it more evenly for you and exact because it's going to make it grow out nicer. There's nothing wrong with point cutting. Just need to make sure that you have the structure in the hair so it grows out nice. You ever have the client come in and say, oh, this side grew out really nice and this side didn't? So why do you think that happened? Yeah, so that means some of the texture that we might have done or even the perimeter we might have done might not have been even on both sides. So then one side grows out nicer than the other. Turn your head just a tad. There we go. Just at the bottom. Just you can start to see the movement and how it's collapsing. You watch the hair do exactly what you're telling it to do with the shear. And let's go to the other side to make sure it's even and grows out just as nice as this side. It's already good up to about right here. All right. Now the haircut's ready to leave the salon. Every time, after every one of my haircuts, I tell the client to run her hands through it. Look at that movement. Look how much more fun this hair is having. So what I say dancing, it means the hair is up inside the haircut, 
bounce it against one another, but you told it where to bounce. So that's why it's going to grow out so much nicer. But um, Sage, go ahead and run your hands through your hair. Um, I always get the client to run their hands through the hair so they feel the physical difference than anything they've ever had before. So we didn't cut a lot of length off. We didn't cut a ton of layers. We just had a little bit more fun. So now when this grows out, she's, she's not going to be able to keep her hands out of the haircut. I promise you. Just the way you push it and watch it lay, that is flawless. All right, I hope you enjoyed this innovative tool training from VIA San Francisco. My name is Chris Vineski. Check me out on Facebook, and I hope you had a good time. Look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks.